is the Isuzu D-Max. It's fitted with electro-hydraulic proportional winch system. It's designed for Western Powers lifting and hoisting applications, but it also has the capability of self-recovery. The maximum load required for lifting applications that can be pulled is 1,550 kilograms and for self-recovery we can pull a maximum of 3,600 kilograms. The line pulls are limited hydraulically, um, so depending on whether the user is lifting or self-recovering, the line pulls will be selected automatically. Um, the system is also fitted with a free spool mechanism which allows the user to pay the rope out uh, without it actually being driven which should speed up the setting up of the system. Um, each system is supplied with a user manual which should have all the information required by the user to operate the vehicle and system safely. We also supply the user with a quick start guide which gives the basic controls and functions and gives the user some information on how he can quickly operate the system and get going as and when he needs to. It's the operator's responsibility to carry out a point of use inspection of the system to make sure the equipment is in good working order. The operator must also make sure that the lifting equipment is within its inspection dates by checking the relevant tags and labels are in date. I am just going to run through the uh, pre-use checks that all users using these vehicles should do before they actually start to use the system. This is important because if there's any damage you need to find out before you actually carry out the operations. Um, first thing is to check the winch itself. I'm going to have a good look around the winch, make sure that there's no damage, no visible damage. Uh, once you've done that, we're going to have a look around the hydraulic side of it, make sure that there's no oil leaks. So we're going to check the fittings on top of the valve up here, check the motor itself and have a good look around the winch and underneath just to make sure there's no signs of oil that's been leaking from the, uh, the components. Um, once you're happy with that, I'm going to check the free spool over here, make sure that it moves freely, it's not been damaged in any way and bent. Uh, and then we'll move on to the socket over on the left hand side. So we're going to make sure that there's no damage to the socket itself. We're going to make sure that the plug was fitted the last time it was used to try and keep the water out of here. Once you're happy with the socket, and we can move on to the pendant. This is the pendant here. We're going to examine the box, make sure that it's not been dropped and it's cracked the box anywhere. Um, we're going to lift the little red collar here and make sure that we've got free range of movement with the joystick and that it returns to centre. You must lift this collar, otherwise the joystick will not move. Make sure that E stops working by pressing it and releasing it. And then examine the cable here. So we're going to make sure that this gland here is tight and then we're just going to run the cable through and make sure there's no signs of damage on the cable itself. We're looking for damaged insulation, visible cables, splits, that sort of thing. When you get to the plug, just make sure that the plug's all okay, there's no dirt in the end of it and that the cable's secure. And we can plug that in then. Whilst doing your checks, if you come across any signs of damage, do not use the system and report it to your line manager. You will also need to fill out a vehicle defect report. The white copy should be given to the garage. The pink copy should be given to your line manager or supervisor. And the yellow copy should be kept in the book. And we're now on to system operation. So the rope is, hook is stowed underneath the vehicle on the actual bumper bracket underneath the vehicle. Um, the free spool is part of the winch itself. The free spool 
engages and disengages the hydraulic drive. So the free spool will only be used for paying out the rope for setting up the procedure. To disengage the drive, we move the free spool lever across to the centre of the vehicle and then we can pull the rope forward and it will move freely. So the rope can be walked out and the system can be set up. At this point, it's a good opportunity to inspect the winch rope for damage and also to expect, inspect the hook. Um, we'll go on to in a little more detail regarding inspection of the rope at the end of the video. To re-engage the winch drive, we move the lever back to the engage position and then we find we need to rotate the drum slightly so the pin engages and you'll hear it clunk back in. So now the drive is back re-engaged, the drum is locked and will only drive under hydraulic power. It's very important that the free spool is never disengaged during a winching operation when the drum is under load. It should only be used for setup when there is no load on the hydraulic circuit. We use the lifting hoist mode and it's controlled via the pendant control. The pendant control has a magnetic base so it can be attached to the top of the vehicle when it's required. We have the joystick which gives us our proportional directional control and we also have emergency stop on the top. It's good practice to before you start, it, start the um, lifting application is to push the emergency stop in while you're setting up the vehicle. The pendant plugs into the front of the vehicle and it plugs in at the winch lead connection point. It's important to make sure that the, the protective cover is replaced when it's not being used. To set the vehicle up for a lifting application, we would now need to make sure that the handbrake is in the upright engaged position, so the handbrake is on. We then need to make sure that the vehicle engine is running. Once the vehicle engine is running, we can then switch on the winch system enable button which is in the cab. This can only be done if the free spool is engaged, so we have a little LED in the cab that shows that the free spool is engaged. If this button is not illuminated, we will not get any control from our winch system. Check that the oil level and oil temperature is okay. The winch RPM can also be increased so that the winch runs at its designed RPM. So the vehicle is now ready for a winching application. At this point, I'll release the emergency stop which enables the clutch and it also enables the hydraulic load valve which supplies hydraulic fluid out to the hydraulic system. When I lit winch out, the further I move the joystick, the faster the line speed. Then to winch in, we move the joystick towards the winch in and that's also speed is proportional to the deflection on the joystick. So we can go very slowly. As and when required, if the operator wants to then work on the system, we can push in the emergency stop, which means that there can be no movement on the joystick at all. And the operator can then work on his equipment. When the emergency stop is pushed in or the joystick is in the neutral position the load is held hydraulically. It is also held via the winch drum brake. And then if we want to move again we can just release the emergency stop, the clutch is re-engaged 
the hydraulics are re-engaged. On the joystick, the locking collar in the centre is provided so that if the pendant is ever dropped, it cannot deflect and cause any danger. For self-recovery mode, the winch is controlled via the joystick inside the cab, which is this one here. When we're going to start a recovery winching application, we want to firstly make sure the engine's running, and then we engage the winch system on the winch system enable button. At this point, we also need to check that the free spool lamp has come on to say that the drive has been engaged. Check that the oil level and oil temperature is OK. Once the system is engaged and enabled, we have to then drop the handbrake before we can have any hydraulic control. So the handbrake is dropped and then we can then winch ourselves in or out. And that is also proportional control. So depending on the deflection of the joystick, you will get a faster line speed at full deflection and a slower line speed coming back to the centre position. During a winching application, the engine speed can be regulated and it's recommended that you regulate the engine speed using the throttle pedal to around 1500 RPM. At the end of a winching application, it's very important to make sure that the rope is wound back onto the drum tightly and in an orderly manner. When you're winding the rope back on, make sure you apply pressure to the last coil so that the, uh, the rope feeds on nice and tightly up against it. You should see no gaps between the coils. Otherwise, when the next wrap goes on, the top coil here will cut down through the, the layer underneath it. You do not want that, that will damage the rope. Um, and once you come to the end of the rope, fix the hook on underneath and then slowly wind it in until you get just a little bit of slack left and then you're done. The free spool would need to be lightly oiled on a regular basis. If the system is pressure washed regularly, the oiling should be increased to preferably after every wash. Winch oil should be checked by a mechanic if signs of a leak. The oil level should be checked at the oil header tank in the engine bay. The oil level should be between the red and green marker on the dipstick. The oil type is a biodegradable VG32. Please refer to the manual for details. We'd also need to be aware of any oil leaks on the system. If the vehicle is parked up for a while and it leaves oil on the floor, it would need to be investigated by your mechanic. We would expect a service, full service, to be carried out one to two years, depending on the frequency of use. If the vehicle is used very regularly, it would be need to be serviced nearer the one year than the two years. Included in the service should be an oil change and also the change of the filters. An annual check that is required is for the electromagnetic clutch belt to be checked. So you would need to check to make sure that there is no slippage on the belt and the belt is tight and does not need adjusting. We would expect a regular general check of the winch system, including the hydraulic components, the hoses, the tank and fittings, and also the fixing bolts on the front of the winch bracket. Make sure all the bolts are tight and nothing has become loose. The system has a latching emergency stop button, which means that when the button is pushed in, it gives the operator time to assess the situation 
and you would have to manually twist to unlatch and release the button. The lift pendant joystick has a locking collar, which means that the joystick cannot be deflected unless the collar is lifted. This also means that if the pendant is dropped, the joystick will not deflect and so it will not put the operator in a dangerous position. Pendant docking station location on the vehicle bonnet. It's a location where the pendant can be temporarily stowed while the system is in use. There is an electrical interlock on the free spool, which means that the system will not enable unless the free spool is engaged. The two modes, lift and self-recovery, are interlocked with the handbrake. This means that the higher line pull of 3,600 kilos cannot be enabled when we are in the lifting mode. When the system is disabled using the emergency stop, both the electronic clutch and the hydraulic load valve are turned off, which gives our system redundancy. During load holding situations, the load is held hydraulically via the load holding valves in the hydraulic system, but is also held via the winch's integral brake, giving the system redundancy. This vehicle is fitted with a wire rope of outer diameter 11 mil and a rope length of 30 meters. And for its lifting application, it has a 5 to 1 safety factor. The rope will be inspected every 12 months during its thorough examination of lifting equipment, but it is also up to the user to periodically check the rope at the beginning of every application.